In this quick lesson, we'll talk about how ng-repeat deals with duplicates. In the previous lesson, you have seen that we didn't have any problem with duplicate events because we, uh, basically ng-repeat references the items in our collection by reference. And as our items were objects, we didn't have any sort of issues. When it comes to primitive types instead, that's something that we need to pay attention to. As you can see, I have an array with repeated numbers and also with unique numbers. And here in my template, my add event HTML, I've defined a simple ng repeat that will loop through them. And I'm adding to the output just the number itself. So if we go back to our main page, what do you expect to see? Let's open our add event page. And as you can see, we have an error which says ng repeat dupes. And if we open the Angular documentation, you'll notice that this error is on the duplicate key in the repeater. We can easily fix this problem by going back to our code and modify our ng repeat by adding a track by keyword followed by dollar $index. In this way, basically, the, the elements will be uh, displayed on our screen and they will be as accessed by their position inside the array. So let's save it and let's see what happens. Back to our event, refresh the page. And as you can see, all of our elements have been displayed. Just keep in mind that whatever you put in your ng repeat, your track by expression must be the last thing. And uh, track by has another powerful capability, which is to increase the performance in your ng repeat. What you don't know yet is that if your collection changes, so say that you store your data in a database and instead of having our coded data, you have, for example, a list of events, and that list of events can change. Well, you can define how your collection should be tracked by. Uh, automatically, AngularJS generates a unique ID for each one of your elements, but every time your collection changes, the whole document object model will be destroyed and recreated, and you don't want to, to get unwanted behaviors. So let's maybe define a quick uh, array of events are coded as well, but we can do something like this. These events, again, will be empty. Then maybe we'll do something in these events and we'll put a few elements inside there. One and two. And then we have a ID, one, and name event one. Maybe let's put it between double quotes. Same thing here will be id id2 and name guess what? even 2. So this is my array and I want, I can also get rid of this, I can initialize it with those two events and now I want to loop through my events. So let's put event in eventctl.events this time Let's ignore the track by for now. Uh, just output the event dot name. Okay. So back to our code. Whoops. What did I mean? An event. Oh, I just forgot to save this. We have event one and event two, right? So imagine that if your data changes this whole uh, document object uh, model will be destroyed and recreated again, and we don't want that to happen. So in order to prevent that, we can do track by event dot ID. Okay. So what will happen? You won't see that in our screen because nothing is changing in our collection, but it still works fine. But what will happen is that whenever any element gets updated, Angular will know that the identifier, the unique ID for that specific item is the event ID. So if that number doesn't change, as long as it's the same, Angular will reuse the same document object model to uh, render your data. So it's a very good thing. Imagine to have a list with a thousand uh, elements. Angular will not destroy all of them and recreate an element that maybe has just been updated uh, or maybe still the same and it's just been recreated. So keep that in mind 
and let me know if you need additional information about that. Uh, maybe this can be a good subject for a bonus lesson in the future.